In order to understand reality as a whole, one of the most important distinctions is the distinction between potentiality and actuality. Spending some time with this distinction is critical to understanding Thomas Aquinas' arguments for the existence of God. So let us take a moment to consider this distinction in some detail. One of the basic puzzles that confronted ancient philosophers was the puzzle about change. How can the water in a river always be flowing by and yet it remains the same river? Things are being and becoming, but how can they both be what they are and become something that they're not? By wrestling with these and various puzzles regarding change, Aristotle discovered the distinction between act and potency or actuality and potentiality. The things around us in nature are not only what they actually are, but also what they can be. It is easy to see the distinction. A pot of water on the stove is actually cold and potentially hot. But once it is on a hot burner for some time, the potentiality to be hot becomes actualized. And when the water is actually hot, it is potentially cold. Aristotle realized that all things in nature are a blend of act and potency, like the water. For example, an acorn is potentially a fully grown oak tree. A child is potentially a grown man. And the water in the ocean is potentially a rain cloud over land. Aristotle realized that change consists of the actualization of the potentiality latent within the things of nature. The acorn grows into an actually tall tree. The child grows into a mature adult man walking and talking. And the water in the ocean evaporates and condenses into a rain cloud, which then showers rain upon the land. All of these changes are the realizations of the potentialities hidden within things. When we think of change as the actualization of potential, a question confronts us. Why does the potentiality of things become actual? After all, potentiality does not realize itself on its own. Pondering this question led Aristotle to the conclusion that there must be some ultimate source of change. The ultimate source of change must be completely actual and not have any potentiality in it. But it is responsible for the realization of potentiality in everything else. The ultimate source of change he called the unmoved mover, or God. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.